Hey, well, thanks for watching another episode of Answering the Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship, and we're highlighting ministries that are working all around the world that are serious and intentional about doing just that. Our next story comes from Louisville, Texas, right outside of Dallas-Fort Worth. We're visiting International Commission. With me, Brent Edwards. Brent, thank you so much for joining us and our thank viewers. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, so Texas is a big place, and you guys are working all over the world, obviously. Why don't yes, you sir. give our viewers a little backstory on how God brought you to this ministry and a little history as well? It's very interesting. Uh, our founder was a West Texas farmer at the time in the late 60s. And Ben saw a need to involve people from American churches in the work, mm -hmm. but not without incorporating the work through churches right. around the world, obviously. Right. That's God's plan, is the church, churches in every nation of the world, to win the people in their country to the Lord. And so that's exactly what we do. We go nowhere in, around the world if we are not invited by a local church. Yeah. Uh, IC has had the opportunity to do what we do, work along with nationals, and again, right. that's the key. Right. Using the prayer model that we use called Operation Andrew, now in 179 nations around the world. Yeah, that's amazing. So, you know, every ministry I say has a pulse, a heartbeat, yeah. a vision. You know, there's always a perfect one on the website, but how do you describe it in your own words? The first two action words in our mission statement are equipping and enabling. Right, right. And it says equipping and enabling believers worldwide right. to do what God has called us to do, yeah. to do church-based evangelism projects, right. to reach unbelievers right. and to and to make disciples right. again right. right out of the great commission yeah. Yeah. and of course the commission that we find in acts 1 8 as well yeah that's beautiful and you know god has been equipping and empowering or enabling <laughs> as well the church the bride yes. where his plan a there is yeah. no plan b to reach the lost right at any cost some would say that's correct and it's interesting that you say that uh Allie, Braun on our staff as we have been doing what we call celebration, some in this last year, mm -hmm. virtually, yeah. that's a phrase she has used frequently. Yeah. Yeah. There is no plan B. The right. plan A is all there is, and it's for each of us to be involved in this process. Yeah, amen. That's good stuff. Hey, stay tuned. We've got some more interviews coming up with staff, some folks that are involved with International Commission, so you too can answer the call and see your part in what God's doing around the world. Keep watching. For more information, you can dial 214-488-2555 or visit our website at www.internationalcommission.org. The mission of IC completely focuses on the Great Commission. So everything we do revolves around the commission that Jesus gave us to share the gospel and make disciples and teaching people to obey everything that he has commanded us to do. So everything we do revolves around this focus of equipping and enabling believers near and far to fulfill that Great Commission. We are connectors. We see a huge need in these places and we see our role is to connect need in sharing gospel message with resources which are available in other places. And we are like connecting local churches with evangelists. They come together, they serve together, they share together, and they follow up together. And our role is to enable local believers uh, to pray, uh, develop relationship, and then go together and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. It's like a bridge between God's people. You know, uh, we get people that are very, very interested in fulfilling the Great Commission but know nothing about what they, where to start. And we get people who would love to have help in doing the Great Commission in their, in their homes, in their communities, but know nothing about where to start. And we connect those two groups. Uh, Operation Endo is like preparing the soil of the hearts. Like a, a, a farmer, before he's planting the seed, he needs to prepare the soil. We mobilize people uh, in the U.S. and in other countries to travel to somewhere where we've got a church and, or several churches that have prepared and prayed for their loved ones and friends and have gone through the relationship process. We have so many ways to equip people to share the gospel, exactly what Christ has called us to do. 
We send a group a year in advance to meet with pastors and to meet with those churches and to train those people and to get them ready for us, our team to come and share the gospel. We train here the people that are going to, to have confidence in their testimony and to see well, if your testimony is the story of God changing your life, then God can use that testimony to change other people's lives. And then we have all these churches that are following up with discipleship af afterward. And it's, it's just, there's absolutely everything biblical about the model and the way that it's done. We have access to restricted access areas around the world that, that no American team could ever go to, but because we have partnerships with leaders in those areas or who have access to those areas, uh, we're, we're able to take the gospel to unreached peoples. And our projects are based on things that um, lead people to the Lord. And uh, we go because we feel called to go. It's really fulfilling the Great Commission. That's obviously what we do at International Commission. You never meet a stranger and you just can't help but have the passion of just wanting to um, share God with them and we want them to have what you've got. So it's the Great Commission. To go and share the gospel, to put tools into churches and church leaders and pastors' hands all over the world. It's all about what can I do to help somebody else share the gospel right where they are. Uh, and it's incredible. Horizon Media Studios, producers of the television series Answering the Call, is looking for Christ-centered, Bible-believing ministries to feature ministries like homeless shelters, children's homes, mission-sending centers, and more. We want to raise awareness of ministries and also mobilize the body of Christ to get involved and answer the call. Tell us about your favorite ministry. Email us at info at atctv.org. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answer and a Call. We're so excited to be in Louisville, Texas, right outside of Dallas, Fort Worth, visiting International Commission. With me, the President, Brent Edwards, talking about evangelism. Evangelism, again, there's a lot of misconceptions about that word, and some people in the church think you even need to be an evangelist because of Billy Graham and people that were specialists because they practiced for a right. while. But we're all supposed to be doing evangelism. True? Beauty of this, really, I say it many times, one of the reasons, other than the obvious, which is the Holy Spirit is all surround, is surrounding it all the time, mm -hmm. is it's so simple. Um, we tell people, if you are saved, you can recite John 3.16, and you have a testimony, then you're prepared to go. Now, mm -hmm. that's a little oversimplified right, because right. we do more than that. Right, right. But that's the point. Everyone is called to it, and everyone, once they've come to know Jesus Christ, does have a testimony of faith right. and can therefore share their story and simply say, now, basically to the person, do you have a story like that? Right. And that's where that relationship yeah. is built with the team member. It's equip and enable them right. to be the evangelist the in their community. Yeah. And that's when things just blossom beyond imagination. Yeah, I love Ephesians 4.11. God gave some of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to equip the body for mm -hmm. the work of ministry. It's the body parts that do the work. Exactly. In 2018, 2019, God allowed us to see over 3.4 million decisions for Christ. That's Verifiable awesome. decisions, but that's not proud, right. nor is that the work of a few American evangelists going. Right. It's because of all those people throughout the nations, over 1.4 million volunteers, if you want to call them that, members of churches right. under the leadership of approximately 400 national leaders around the world. Right. They were the army going out and that's that's how God has used this ministry. Well stay tuned we're gonna get some more interviews from some of the folks here at International Commission talking about Operation Andrew and how you too can get involved with this great ministry reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus. The idea is that we want to be able to tell everybody in the world the truth of the gospel. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that, but IC has found a streamlined model for doing that. We send a group a year in advance to meet with pastors and to meet with those churches and to train those people and to get them ready for us, our team, to come and share the gospel. We train here the people that are 
going to, to have confidence in their testimony and to see well, if your testimony is the story of God changing your life, then God can use that testimony to change other people's lives. This is the DNA of this ministry, evangelism. Uh, we've been asking over the years, like, can you bring food? Can you do medical? Can you do this? But we, we stick to what, it, what it is the DNA of our ministry, which is go and share the gospel. We believe that when people know about Jesus Christ, the hope that comes in the transformation in their lives will be bring God's blessings in all areas of their lives. Mm -hmm. The Lord is using International Commission to help equip the saints to share the gospel and make disciples really a lot through our evangelism training called E and E training. So that stands for equipping and enabling training. A lot of people say, oh, I don't have the gift of evangelism, so I'm not going to do it, or that's someone else's role. But really, it's the role of every disciple of Christ to share their faith. So we just provide simple tools to enable people to learn how to share their testimony, how to share the gospel, how to start faith conversations, and even pray with people if they've never done that in person before. We have an evangelism toolkit that says, okay, what works for one person may not work for another person, but let us put a tool in your hand that will give you a strategy, help you to be intentional about sharing Jesus with your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, uh, the people that you go to school with, uh, the people that you walk outside and see. How can you effectively, intentionally pray for and then share Jesus with people? I don't ever want to miss an opportunity that God puts in front of me. And what they do with Operation Andrew is just, it's so simple. And it's just the steps and it's what God has called us to do throughout our ministry. What I like about Operation Andrew, it's a very natural way to evangelize your people because every Christian knows how to pray. It's easy. No matter of your spiritual age, no matter of your gender or your background, if you are born again Christian, you love to pray, you're supposed to pray. And that's how we start, we start with the prayer. So we can engage whole church, not only pastors or gifted evangelists, we invite whole local church to take these cards and start praying diligently, name by name, for the next, let's say, nine months. And when you pray, three miracles will happen. First miracle, your church will be, hand, you will be changed. You will stop looking only on your problems, on your situation, on your circumstances. You're starting to think about somebody else, your neighbor, your family member, your friend or your colleague on the job. The second miracle, of course, will take place in these people's hearts. When you pray, God definitely will do something in their hearts. And the third miracle, the local church will be changed. When local church starts to think outside of the box, God does miracles all the time. To start praying for a period of time. Pray for nine months for somebody and then approach in, uh, evangelize. So that's exactly the, the uh, International Commission Operation and it's working. And they, this world needs Christians who come together, praying, uh, going, giving, uh, sacrifice uh, to see souls come to Christ. For more information, you can dial 214-488-2555 or visit our website at www.internationalcommission.org. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. The discipleship process really takes place after our projects have, have left and gone. We mentor and we disciple the people that we have been leading with, the nationals there or the churches that we have partnered with. And then that process continues and goes on and hopefully the multiplication factor takes place and you have more disciples and more disciples, therefore sharing the gospel with a multitude of people over the course of time. 
What discipleship means to us is teaching other people to obey what God has commanded us in the Bible. And God has given us the Great Commission and God's plan A for reaching the nations is through the church, through the body of Christ. There is no plan B. And it says in Matthew 24, 14 that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So Christ will not come again until every tribe, tongue, and nation has heard, and we are dedicated to making sure that every tribe, tongue, and nation has heard the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering a Call. We're so excited to talk with Brent Edwards, the president for International Commission, talking about some of these North American projects as well, as far as International Commission. You're doing some stuff in North yeah, America. Um, thank you for asking, Chuck. You know, last year, as we said previously, everyone was challenged. And any international ministry look, you know, came in the office on March the 13th and went, oh my goodness, Lord, what do we learn? Yeah. What is going to happen? Right. Well, thankfully we did. Um, we prayed. You know, we talked about prayer before. We prayed, Lord, what would you have us learn? What would you have us do? Right. Don't just sit around and, and, well, we'll wait until we go out around the world again. Yeah. That's where we are. We're right. about to head around the world here in just a couple of weeks. Right. But the point being, and we'll keep doing that, the point being, God said, now learn something else, two other things that are very important. Right. We have a very creative media and creative team here. Yeah. So they began to think, well, you know, Americans need some tools for being evangelists. Yeah. Other than just scriptures they may have learned many, many years ago. So we began to do some video mm -hmm. training tools using things like the Evangicube, mm -hmm. Operation Andrew, Three Circles, things like that that we put on our website. They're called Evangelism Resources. It's right. the Evangelism Toolkit. Right. That began to enable some conversations with American pastors. You know, this is a little promo flyer for our international projects. You know, God said, why not do what you do all over the world in 179 countries mm -hmm. in North America? And so that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to do the same thing in North America yeah. that we do around the rest of the world. Yeah. Taking people from one area of right. church work, right. churches, right to another area in North America, that makes it intentional. Yeah. Rather than just yeah. saying, let's, let's go do evangelism in our neighborhood. Yeah. When a team is coming and partnering with them, right. they get serious about it. Right. That's what he says in Acts 1.8, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So locally, regionally, and globally. Interesting that you should say that yeah. because part of this whole conversation ended up, we have a theme every year at IC. Yeah. So our theme this year is very simply commissioned here, mm -hmm. there, and everywhere. Amen. The there is the 179 countries where we'll continue to go and we'll continue to push into new areas. Right. The everywhere is those places I talked about, the 36 nations where we've not been yet, where we're right. asking God to open those doors. But the here is obvious. Right. The here is right here in our yeah. own backyard. Amen. As you go, right? So As you go. To the grocery store, to, you know, the, the, the restaurant. I mean, it's, there's, God has people in your path. That's correct. Be ready in and out of season <laughs> for giving an answer to the, the hope that's in you. Absolutely right. true. Amen. You guys are awesome. Stay tuned. We're going to talk a little bit more about the discipleship and North American projects here with International Commission right outside of Louisville, Texas. Keep watching. When I was in Belize and I saw people saved and I, I realized the scripture came to life that I was sitting across from a new creation. Uh, there was a lady that was breastfeeding and she had just prayed to see, receive Christ and in my mind I, I juxtaposed them. I said, she's now the newborn and she needs to be fed, she needs to learn and she needs to grow. And seeing that there's tools already in place for that to happen, as soon as, that, as, soon as I stopped praying with that woman, the pastor said, I want to come and teach you about the choice you've made. And it, it's, it's, it's one step after the other. He will guide you. His spirit is able to do things that you can't even imagine. And so you could see your, your workplace, your secular workplace, turned for the gospel because God has called you into ministry in that location. Making disciples for us is developing a relationship with people. So that, so that they understand by example, by practice, and by walking beside us, 
what it's like to follow Jesus Christ and to, and to spread his good news in the world, to be part of his kingdom. Discipleship is all about making Christ followers. I pour into somebody else with the intention that one day that person is going to turn around and find somebody else to pour into. Uh, to me, it's when you lead someone to Christ, when they accept Jesus, they are a newborn. You have to feed that newborn. You have to give them nourishment. You have to give them the tools they need to grow up and be healthy. And then they turn around and find somebody else to do that as well for. But it's all about how can I pour into somebody else? It's life on life. For more information, you can dial 214-488-2555 or visit our website at www.internationalcommission.org. Horizon Media Studios, producers of the television series Answering the Call, is looking for Christ-centered, Bible-believing ministries to feature ministries like homeless shelters, children's homes, mission-sending centers, and more. We want to raise awareness of ministries and also mobilize the body of Christ to get involved and answer the call. Tell us about your favorite ministry. Email us at info at atctv.org. There are lots of ways that people can get involved with the International Commission. You can start by praying for us. The power of prayer changes the world and it starts with you in your heart. The main thing that we need prayer for is that God would continue His work, that He would send uh, laborers for the harvest, uh, that He would send people who would go to reach the nations. But we also have a lot of specific prayers. And so we have something called the Icy Encounter, uh, where people can sign up and volunteer to pray over specific needs that are necessary for the work that God is doing in those areas all over the world. People can get involved through going with us. We coordinate typically between 20 and 25 international trips a year, and we're starting projects right here in the United States where people can partner with other churches to go. You can go on a project uh, either overseas or right here in North America, um, just supporting by prayer also. Prayer is such an important part of what we do. In fact, in Operation Andrew, that's what we do. We pray, we pray, we pray, because we want to go and we want to share the gospel. Some people are called to go and can go. Some people, some people can't go. But you know what, you can support somebody who can go. If you can't go, then support somebody else. Give so that somebody else can go. If you will support, God will provide those who can go. You know, we cannot do the ministry alone. You know, even Jesus, he put the disciples two by two, where he trained another and sent them together. We need each other. Well, thanks so much for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. By now, we're hoping you've got a hunch from the Holy Spirit to answer the call and get involved. There's people all over the country, even all around the world, that can actually partner with you guys. Talk about that. There's lots of places where our teams will be going. You can go on our website, www.internationalcommission.org, and look at Go. Right. Of course, we want you to be a part of the projects around the world, but if your church would like to host, join with churches in your area and host yeah. a national project right here right. in the U.S., yeah. please do that. Yeah. Please get with us. You can call us directly mm -hmm. and, and make sure that and say, we want to host a North America project with right. other churches in our community. And of course, finally, we are like all. We are a ministry that is based on faith, right. and part of that faith is the finances that go along in making yeah. this happen. Mm -hmm. And it takes funds to make mm -hmm. that happen. Nothing happens in this ministry without prayer, and it's blanketed in prayer from the very beginning. The idea that Operation Andrew is meant to be a year for prayer by name for the people that we're going to share the gospel with. To know that when we go there, the Holy Spirit's already been involved in their life for a year. We do a, a prayer calendar for our team while they're gone so that their support team, that their prayer circle can pray for them every day with what they're doing every day, the day they arrive, the day of their rally, the day of their visits. Everything that, that we do has to be blanketed in prayer or it just doesn't work. You can go to our webpage and you can click and 
see the stories, you can see what is going on, what places are we planning to go, and just pray for the open doors, for visas, for good uh, possibilities to go. Secondly, you can go personally to the places uh, and you can personally go and firsthand do this ministry work. And lastly, people can partner through giving. God has gifted everyone with a role in the Great Commission, praying, giving, going, mobilizing, and welcoming. So we need people with these world Christian characteristics to be involved in our ministry so that we can continue to share the gospel and make disciples. This is the best investment you're gonna make in missions today. Um, every dollar is multiplied around the world because we work with so many different people uh, on the ground, in their own communities uh, around the world. Uh, every dollar you give is going to be put toward uh, equipping and enabling people for the mission of God. When Jesus left, the last thing he said as a commander, our commander in chief, was go and share. That was what he, his command that for us until he comes back. And remember whose they are and what they're here for and who's in control and who has this. God's got this, everything that we're going through, and He always comes through. He always wants to take care of us, and we should trust Him, not to say, yes, I trust the Lord, but God wants us to trust Him 100% with everything that we do in life. You prepare the hearts of the people, and later people will be hearing the gospel. That's uh, something which uh, uh, I was dreaming when I still had been in Romania, and God uh, uh, gave me this opportunity, and I'm very grateful to Him. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us today? I just thank you, first of all, and I mean that. And I don't know uh, exactly how you edit all of this, but I think it's important <laughs> to say, and this is right in God's timing and yeah. very much appreciated. Yeah, I end all my emails with, hey, God's timing is always perfect. Yeah. God has a way of confirming Amen. His timing and Amen. stuff. But yeah, thanks for our partnership and uh, love an opportunity to pray with our viewers watching and uh, everyone's touch and agree. Yeah. Uh, Father, we just thank you again for just uh, the opportunity to talk about what you're doing in and through International Commission. We know there's still a lot of work to do before you come back. So we even pray with our viewers. We come into agreement. Lord, yes. here we are. Send us some way, somehow. God, we just offer our lives as that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, to do with it as you wish. Since you've saved it and redeemed it, Lord, use us. God, show us what our next steps are in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, listen, thanks for watching this episode of Answering the Call. And until our next episode, may you and your families be blessed.